Hey there, okay, and good Monday on December 19th. Let's start this off as we do with some good old Evan Williams honey because, yeah, it's been a long weekend. I wanted to upload some videos, but as I'm always doing, something's always going on. And yeah, I did see Avatar 2 a second time and I wasn't totally fucking hammered and I want to make a video on that because, you know, when, when you're actually sober, there's a lot of things you can pick out that you didn't pick out on the first showing. So let's get into this with some good old Sprite Zero because after the weekend I had, I could use some Zero and not all the sugar from regular Sprite <laughs> with Christmas coming up and getting fat. So, okay, drum roll, ready? Yeah, the Evan Williams honey just goes down smooth. So, as I always do, two new subscribers, and thank you so much. But I, I said, some people on YouTube and everything, like, you love the originality and the coolness of names, but as you can see, comments from uh, God of War and stuff, Rings of Power, as always, people are awesome. But right here, new subscriber, Chuck Harrion, like, Chuck Harrion. It sounds like some badass, like, Lord of the Rings kind of fucking name or something. <laughs> and somebody here named Caesar Perez, like, Caesar Perez, like, something like, you know, Caesar Perez, but... Uh, honestly, both you people they said being dumb enough or kind enough or smart enough hitting that sub button. Oh man, that means the world to me. Now, what's this video going to be? Why haven't I uploaded in a couple of days? I figured on the thumbnail, let's go with the, the two C's, the two best C's right now in Hollywood. Cruise and Cavill. Like, uh, which one should we get to first? Tom Cruise! Let's just go with Cruise because Tom Cruise is a fucking maniac and we all love him. But before we get into this, well, yeah, as always, enjoy the intro. Okay, Tom Cruise being a fucking maniac as he is. Tom Cruise, sorry, from, from IndieWire. Thanks fans for support while jumping out of a plane on Mission Impossible set watch. And Nani? Nani? Basically, if you watch the freaking video, you talk about Top Gun Maverick. It's coming to Paramount Plus, which I actually just got for the Tulsa King, which is awesome, by the way. And yeah, um, basically, Tom Cruise, you can watch the video right here. And he's just saying, I'll play you know, a good 10 seconds. And... Yeah, Tom Cruise being the maniac that he is in a class act, he's like, hey, I want to thank all the fans for Mission Impossible and Top Gun Maverick being, well, before Avatar, the most successful film of 2022 and of his career. But he jumps out of a plane like a fucking maniac. And God, I, it's Cruise when people were, you always get people like, oh, Scientology. I, I, I don't give a fuck anymore. I just don't. So now. Right here, it's, in, it's coming from IndieWire again. Watch Tom Cruise break down his most dangerous stunt ever for New Mission Impossible. He's a legend. And he said that, we've been working on this for years. I wanted to do it since I was a little kid. Basically, you know, because he's trying to get himself killed. For the New Mission Impossible film, it's, there's, if you scroll down right here, because it's just talking about Tom Cruise and training, everything like that. But it's a nine minute fucking video. I'll play you the first 10 seconds. And the thing is, this is Cruz right here. I love this fucking player. It's killing me. But this is Cruz at pushing 60 years old. His most dangerous fucking stunt. And why would I record videos? It, it's like fucking with me. You know what? Let's try. Let's reload the page. Here we go. So, apologize. We're here. Tom Cruise on Twitter. And just, just look at this. Like, come on. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot it in Norway, and it'll be a motorcycle jump off a cliff yep. into a base jump. I wanted to do it since I was a little kid. So, a Mission Impossible Part 7, Part 1, whatever it's going to be, uh, I forget it's called, I forgot. Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise is going to fucking die. It's it's the dude fucking really doing it. I mean, you got like, you know, the wires and everything helping out, but it's really Tom Cruise jumping off with a fucking motorbike. And, uh, man, the man, man loves this cra craft and uh, awesome. Now, for the other C, let's get into the good, the bad, and the Cavill. But right here, this sucks coming from IGN. And yeah, you know, Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot as the Flash cameos reportedly cut to make way for James Gunn's DC. And you're like, damn, man, you already freaking had Cavill and Gal Gadot be in it. And they're supposed to have the whole Flash and Flashpoint. And they just fucked everything up. So it's basically just talking about that. So the sunsetting of Cavill's time as Superman was the clearest indication yet that Gunn and Saffron are mounting a substantial overhaul of DC. Yep. Cavill also shot a cameo in The Flash, one of four DC movies set to release in 2023, 
but sources say that the cameo, along with that of Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, is being is now being cut, given the studio chose to not go forward with Wonder Woman 3. Like, damn. And of course, Cavill and Black Adam. And it just, eh. I just had to put that out there because it's, you know, what sucks is, on a side note, I'm going to see Avatar 2 with my sister and family. They showed the trailer for Shazam 2. And she's like, yeah, what's even a point now with anyone getting hyped to see Shazam 2? It's with everything happening. Like, yeah, no more Superman, no more Black Adam 2, no more Wonder Woman 3. Like, fuck, it makes you, why, why even want to go see Shazam 2? But last, but certainly not least, some would say you saved the best for last. And this is great news for everybody. And I'll be the first one to admit that I'm not the biggest fan of the Warhammer franchise. I know of it. I know about it. As much as I call myself a geek and a nerd, that guys, I'm blue collar. And even I don't have so much time to get into the figurines and the lore and the mythology. But I am happy to hear about Henry Cavill. As we said before, yes, you know, Witcher is gone. Yes, Superman's gone. But Cavill isn't gone. The man isn't going anywhere. And the cool part is Henry Cavill to star in, executive produce, in Warhammer 40,000 film and TV franchise as Amazon Studios acquires right to Games Workshop brand. And this is a win-win. It's a win-win. It's a win-win because Cavill is a massive fan. Anybody can check out his Instagram and he's, you know, talking with fans all the time, stopping by shops. He's painting his figurines during COVID and shit. Now, some people would say off the bat, let's, let's break this down where it's going to Amazon. That can be good and bad. As I've done my on tap with my buddies, Wes and Russell, next week we're doing part two of on tap and I won't be as drunk as you can imagine. <laughs> Amazon, like Netflix, does dumb shit like Rings of Power and the Wheel of Time. But then again, for me, I love the Terminal List and I love Reacher, also liked Invincible. So. Even The Boys Season 3, I actually enjoyed a lot about The Boys Season 3, but the point is, that can be good or bad. If Amazon was smart, they would see what's happening with The Witcher and Superman and really bank on this shit. So, Amazon has made it official, confirming it has secured global rights to the Warhammer 40,000 game from Games Workshop for Henry Cavill, and he's going to star in and executive produce the franchise across all Amazon Studios productions. So, encompasses rights to the to the universe across TV series, film, and likely games and animation. Now, I don't know much about this, but I've heard people like, say, The Critical Drink are talking about how hard it would be to adapt this kind of universe and world in a TV. But if anybody could do it, I'm going to trust Cavill because this was the problem with The Witcher. It's how bad you guys were fucking up The Witcher, Lord. And he's like, I'm out of here. Hopefully, this won't happen again. But dear God, look at this. Since launching 40 years ago, wow, the Warhammer brand has expanded through miniatures, source books, tabletop games, animations, novels, a wealth of licensed material, and video games. So it's set in the far future where humanity is at the stake of um, <clears throat> the brightest future, darkest age. Um, let's see. 40,000 has captured the imagination of, of all ages from all walks of life and all over the world. So Jennifer Sulky. Ooh, you know, funny if Wes and Russ, you see this, we talked about um, someone was saying in our chat, Jennifer Sulky is not a good name. <laughs> but We'll see, though. Maybe. Maybe. And, yep. So, here's Henry Cavill, the legend. I have loved Warhammer since I was a boy, making this moment truly special for me. The opportunity to shepherd the cinematic universe from its inception is quite the honor and the responsibility. I couldn't be more grateful for all the hard work put in by Vertigo, Amazon Studios, and Games Workshop to make this happen. One step closer to making a nigh a lifelong dream come true. So, we will see. I mean... It would be awesome if anybody could bring the Warhammer franchise and universe to life and do it justice. It would be Henry Cavill. But as people said, and you know, I'm realistic. I'm not totally optimistic, but I'm not totally pessimistic about the situation because Cavill was part of why The Witcher got, you know, made for. He's a massive Witcher nerd. He loves the books. He loves the fucking video games. And we all saw how that turned out. So I would say Amazon, seriously, guys, if anybody, if you want to keep making money, if you want to keep doing the right thing, and making your fucking fans happy, stop repeating the Wheel of Time and the Rings of Power and start doing like how Netflix does with Cobra Kai or like say fucking Invincible or Jack Reacher or The Terminal List. The Terminal List and Reacher and talking to Wes and Russell, what makes it so good is it, how closely it follows the books and does justice to the source material. I've not read The Terminal List, but from um, all accounts, the guy, I think it's Jack Carr or something who wrote the first Terminal List book. The show follows the damn book 
almost verbatim. So Amazon, you got you have opportunity to like please the fans and not piss people off, and you got a fucking A list actor with Henry Cavill. Wouldn't it be so good for people like me who never checked out the Warhammer franchise to finally get into this world and this universe? And shit, it would be great to see this done justice because after 40 years, to say the least, this brand has a big fucking fan base. And as I said, I know a lot about it. I just never got into it because, you know, it's just there's only so many comics and video games and books. And I'm a busy man. As we do, we have to check our watch and uh, finish this shit. Trick it, trick it. Okay, let's get Bender. This calls for a drink. And that's delicious. And I'm going to go back to work.